Hello YouTube, Mandy from Unlock Base here. So today I will show you how to use any SIM card on the Verizon Motorola Moto E, also known as the XT1528. So yes, this is the Verizon version. And yeah, first of all, we have a Sun Cellular SIM card here from the Philippines. So I will try and put it in the phone and see what the phone does when we put in a foreign SIM card. Any SIM card other than Verizon SIM card. I'm about to push the SIM card in and see what the phone says. So I push it in. So we went from no SIM card to no service. Well, the thing is this phone is already unlocked out of the box. However, in Android, this thing is pre-configured to connect to CDMA networks. Now, in order to connect it to a GSM network, we need to connect this phone to the computer and we need to enter some commands using ADB. Now in order to do that, go ahead and hop into your computer. So on the computer, you're gonna want to go ahead and download two files. So first of all, so okay, so first of all, go to adb.clockwork.com and download the universal ADB drivers. Then next, you're gonna need to go to this address, developer.android.com slash studio slash releases slash platform tools. Don't worry, I'll have both of the URLs in the written guide of this video. So yeah, so go ahead and also download the SDK platform tools. Since I use Windows, I'm gonna be downloading the Windows version. But if you are doing this tutorial on a Mac or Linux, which... I'm not gonna show you because I don't have a Mac or a Linux computer. You can download those version, the right one for your computer. So yeah, so I'll just download the Windows version. And then after that, I already got both of these downloaded. So the very first, I mean the very next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and install the universal ADB driver. So, Okay, so once that's done, go ahead and click close and then go ahead and launch the or open platform tools, the zip file. So go ahead and open it and then go ahead and extract platform tools anywhere on your computer. But I'd recommend doing it on the desktop so you can find it easily. Okay, so once that's done, go ahead and open up open up the platform tools folder that you just extracted go to the address bar and highlight everything basically go ahead go ahead and copy whatever is in there and then go ahead and hit windows r type in cmd and then press enter okay so from here you're gonna want to type in cd space then right click so go ahead and type in CD space and then right click and then go ahead and press enter and then go to your phone and go on to settings. So go ahead and swipe down, go to settings and then after that scroll all the way down to about phone and then after that go ahead and tap the build. Well first of all before you do that go ahead and scroll down. And then go ahead and tap in the build number until you see you are now a developer. Okay, so once you've done that, go ahead and go back. And then go ahead and scroll down until you see developer options. And then after that, go ahead and turn it on if it's not already on by default. And then if, it's, if you get this message, go ahead and tap OK. Go ahead and scroll down until you see USB debugging. Go ahead, turn it on, and then press OK. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and go get your USB cable, connect one end to the computer, and connect the other end to the phone. Which, you know, if you can do it, use two hands, it would be a lot easier. So I already got that connected. Okay, then the next thing you're gonna want to do here is you're gonna want to go ahead and is hop back to your computer and type in adb shell oops 
So go ahead type in ADB shell. Press enter. And then go back to your phone. And you're gonna get this error message. I mean not error message but this dialog box saying allow USB debugging. Go ahead and just check the check part check box that says always allow from this computer and then go ahead and tap OK and then after that go back to your computer and type in ADB shell again and then press enter if you did everything right you, you should see something like shell at serna dash or underscore cdma something like this if you see something like this well you did everything correctly go ahead and type in this command then press enter then after that i type it again just to make sure it works then press enter so basically do it two times and then type in this command and then after that do it again then press enter then after that type in this command so type in this command then after that press enter then go ahead and do it again so do it two times and then after that type in this command and then do it again press enter and then after that go ahead and type in reboot so at this point your phone should reboot Okay, so okay, so if it doesn't work like mine, if it still if it still says no service, go ahead and type in adb shell and then repeat these commands again. Okay, so as you can see here, I went to adb shell and then I repeated these commands again, just like I did the first time. And then I'm gonna reboot again and see if, if it's gonna work this time. So, as you can see here, the phone just rebooted. Okay, so this time around, it worked after doing this the second time. So yeah, so if you're gonna be doing this, if it, if it doesn't work the first time, well, don't fret and repeat it and by the second try, it should work. So if not, just keep trying until it works. But usually, by the second try, it works for me. Okay, so yes, we are now connected to Sun Cellular with Signal. Let's do some phone calls here. I'm just gonna check my balance, but you get the idea. At least we can tell that the phone call is working. Your account balance is zero. Your account. Okay, and so yeah, so the phone call works. Now, if you are wondering why aren't we getting any data connection, well, you're gonna need to enter your APN, which is your access point name or something like that. So go ahead and go to set. So yeah, on settings, go ahead and hit more. Go to cellular network and then access point names and then after that you're gonna go ahead and tap plus and then for name name it whatever you want but i'll just call it sun because this is this is the apm for the sun network but again yours yours is gonna differ if you are going to use a different network so you can obtain this information by googling your carrier's name and then apn so I already have mine pulled up here, so I'll just type in the APN according to what I got here. So I'll just type in mean internet, at least this is for the Sun Cellular Network here in the Philippines. Mean internet, tap OK. And then after that, I'll just go ahead and save it. And then I'll just select it. And then I'll turn on the data connection if it's not already on.
And before we know it, there we are. We now have a data connection. At least we're connected to 2G. Because the sun network here in my area, the area, co the, well, the coverage in this area, it just sucks. But yeah, but if you're outside of North America, you should get at least up to 3G depending on your network. But if you're inside of North America, you should be able to connect to 4G or LTE without any problems. So there you go. So there you go. This is it for this video. Thank you for watching.